What's up y'all? So it is the day to change out my brakes. Uh, as you can see, the um, brake rotor is well worn. There's lots of hot spots on the rotor. This is the stock rotor, the stock pads. Um, I bought the car when it had 23,000 miles and um, it's well worn now. I've done two track days, a road trip, a uh, bunch of daily driving, a bunch of spirited driving, and as you can see, these rotors are done. Lots of hot spots. So, whenever I brake from really high speed, like suddenly, whenever I try to like strong, you know, kind of get on the brakes, I get really strong judder coming from this wheel mainly, but both front wheels. They're, they're like this. These are hot spots, basically from uneven pad deposits on the rotor because the pads are not meant for the track day and for lots of heat. So when you exceed the heat range of the pads and the rotor surface, um, you know, because I'm using stock stuff here, you're going to get uneven deposits and it's just going to ruin everything really quickly. But I knew that was going to happen, so I was prepared. So let me show you guys what I'm replacing um, the stock stuff with. And that would be R1 Concepts drilled, cross-drilled rotors and Porterfield R4S racing brake pads. So first, let me start with the rotors. R1 Concepts, very well-known brand. Um, I've had the, this will be my third car that I've had these rotors on uh, now. R1 Concepts has been around a long, long time. They're, they're well, uh, you know, known in the industry for making a very quality, very solid product. Um, they come with a coating on the hat here of the rotor to prevent rust, and it does work as advertised, keeps everything looking extremely good. Um, I think my last set lasted about two and a half, maybe three years before I started to see the coating that comes on here kind of wear away. Um, and that's with daily driving, living in different states, snow, all sorts of things. So if you have a car that you mostly daily, um, and even if you, you wanna do a couple of track days uh, autocross, stuff like that. You cannot go wrong with some R1 Concepts rotors. Um, I've done it all with these and they're amazing. I think for the entire set, I paid just over 300 bucks, which once again is, uh, very, is a very, very good price. Um, and they look amazing, you know. I went with the cross-drilled because of the look. I really like the cross-drilled look. It's just a personal preference of mine. Sure, over time, uh, you know, once you wear these rotors way down, uh, they will, you will start to develop some hairline cracks, fractures in here, if you're really hard on these rotors. So if you're doing track days, uh, you know, like once a month, two times a month, um, if you're frequently doing track days where you're, you're heating up and cooling these brakes, um, don't get the cross drilled, get slotted or just blank rotors. But I'll be doing maybe two autocrosses a month, lots of spirited and daily driving. I'll, I probably won't do any more hard track days on this car in the form that it's in right now, just because, you know, I, I don't really want to beat up on it that much. Uh, autocross is kind of more of my thing right now for this car. Um, and I'm not going to go too extreme with this car as of right now. So for me and for 99% of car enthusiasts who like to do a little autocross here and there, uh, spirited driving, you know, uh, canyon cruises, that kind of thing, um, R1 Concepts are more than enough of uh, a rotor to satisfy your needs. If you're doing track day stuff and you have to go with R1 Concepts, uh, just get a slotted rotor or uh, the blanks. But anyway, that's why I went cross-drilled because I like the look. It looks sexy. And man, I mean, look at how good this rotor looks. It's just a really good looking uh, piece. So once again, I got front set, rear set over there. The front and rear rotors are really similar in size. They kind of shocked me. I'm used to the rear rotors being really small and the fronts being large. But, um, you know, like my other two cars were front wheel drive, so that's usually how it goes in a front wheel drive car. But this is an all wheel drive 2.0 Julia, so the um, rotors are more or less uh, similar sizes all around the car. 
So anyway, I'm making this uh, break video uh, because I don't think anyone has made a comprehensive video on how to exactly do a brake change on the 2.0 Julia front and rear. So as you guys know, we have these jacking points under the car, which make it very hard to get a uh, get regular jack stands, uh, you know, under the car. So you can't really jack up all four tires, all four corners at once, unless you have four of these jack stands, or you want to hand crank. Uh, four of the you know scissor jacks and I'm not doing all that. So what I did is basically I'm going to do uh, Two at a time. So I'm going to do the front two and then I'm gonna put the wheels back on and then I'm gonna go to the rear and Do the rear two now there is a trick number one. You have to make sure that you come over here and you uh, pop up the uh, brake fluid service panel and you take off the cap. This is so that when you are um, expanding or retracting, as I'll say, the uh, brake piston in the caliper, um, the fluid can uh, the fluid can be pushed up in here and not be you know pressurized. Otherwise, if you had the cap on, the fluid would, the uh, brake piston wouldn't go anywhere. It's just pressure relief essentially. And the other big piece is make sure that if you don't have a buddy or a wife or girlfriend or boyfriend, whatever, to hop into the car and um, press the brake, make sure that you purchase one of these. This is worth its weight in gold. It's a little bit expensive. It's 60 bucks. This is the Motive Power Bleeder. Uh, make sure you get the European um, adapter here that is CNC aluminum. It's, like I said, it's w worth its weight in gold. Uh, get the aluminum head uh, because it's going to seal better. The plastic one leaks. And um, on all the joints, just make sure you put a little bit of, uh, I put some uh, thread sealer or something, high pressure thread sealer and stuff like that. But basically, this is going to allow you to bleed your brakes by yourself with one person versus needing somebody to get in the car and uh, press on the, uh, the brake pedal. The other last thing is you will have to, in order to do the rear brakes, as you know, we have an electronic rear parking brake. You will need to go inside of the car before you, once you, uh, if you're gonna do it my method with the front first and then the rears, uh, once you put the tires back on the front, lower the car and the car is level, you will have to go inside the car, put it in a brake service mode, retract the rear parking brake, and then jack up the rear tires, the rear two uh, wheels, and you'll be able to take off the brakes and uh, change them. If you don't do that, you will not be able to take off uh, the brake caliper and you're running into all sorts of issues. I'll show you how to do that. It's very simple. Just follow it step by step. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. Okay guys, so it goes without being said. First things first, we're gonna need to take off uh, the brake caliper. Um, like I said, make sure you jack up the car, use jack stand, use uh, some hydraulic jacks, scissor jacks, whatever you wanna do. Uh, the only reason I'm doing, like I said, I'm not, I, I don't have four of these jack stands. I just, uh, these jacks, I just have two, hydraulic one over there from Harbor Freight, and this one also from Harbor Freight, and I'm not gonna do four scissor jacks, one by one in all four corners, it's ridiculous. Uh, and I, I wouldn't really trust a scissor jack uh, or four of them. So I have these hydraulic jacks and just as fail safes, I have two uh, jack stands positioned directly under the motor mount um, attachment to the subframe. So if one or both of the hydraulic jacks were to fail, which the probability is extremely small, um, the uh, car will just, you know, rest on these jack stands until I can get it off, put the wheels on. So make sure that if you are using this method, you do have a fail safe, just like these. Redundancy is your friend. Okay, so anyway, the first thing you'll need to do is you'll need to take a punch like this. You can buy this at AutoZone or O'Reilly's. See if I can get it to focus there like this. You buy it at AutoZone or O'Reilly's, uh, anywhere, you know, auto parts, whatever sold. And then you're gonna go ahead into the slot right here and you're gonna punch um, the uh, 
slider pin, this, this pin that you can barely see it because it's, it's dirty, but this pin goes all the way across. You're gonna punch both of these pins out and just gonna use just a regular hammer. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. Okay guys, so now that the punch is out, or I'm sorry, now that the uh, slider pins are out, uh, just set them to the side. I was able to punch them out and just remove them by hand. Uh, you may have to use some grips or vi vice grips or pliers to pull it all the way out, depending on how many miles you got in your car and the last time you did your brakes. Um, but uh, yeah, just pull them out and uh, set them to the side. Okay, y'all, so for this next piece, uh, let me show you. Oh, let me flip the camera over. There's this bolt right here. All right, right here, my finger's on, it's a T55. Uh, and then this one right here, okay? The, those two bolts are securing the entire caliper to the actual knuckle. So you'll need a 55 uh, Torx bit, a T55, okay? Go ahead, once again, get that from your local auto parts store. And um, you're just gonna go ahead and, you know, counterclockwise and loosen both of those bolts. All right. Okay, y'all, so uh, I've got both bolts out. Um, they look fine, you know, no corrosion, rust, anything crazy. Um, they're both straight, you know. Like I said, car is still very young and mild, so I, I would say don't replace these. There's no real need to. Um, and the, uh, the manual for both the front and the rear brakes I'm going to include in the description below, so... Just go to the links below um, in the description if you want a colorful uh, color picture step-by-step -step walkthrough or if you get lost in this video, X, Y, Z. Uh, so I always put like some, some non-permanent Loctite or the equivalent of that on there uh, when reinstalling. But anyway, once you take these uh, bolts out, uh, just go ahead and uh, once again put them, put them in your little tool bin and uh, we're ready to do the last step which is you're gonna disconnect this sensor right here. This is this goes to the brake pads. This is the wear sensor. So this will tell you, uh, to this will tell your ECU um, if your brake pads, if it's time for a change in the brake pads. My sensor didn't kick on. Uh, like I said, I'm changing these kind of early because I did a lot of wear and tear on them. Um, so I didn't really need this car to tell me, but uh, you gotta disconnect these. And your new brake pads, uh, your new brake pads should come with, uh, and wear sensors installed. And once we get to the part where we're gonna throw in the brake pads, I'll explain more about the brake pads I chose. All right, so let's go ahead and disconnect that sensor. Okay, folks, so uh, once you have disconnected the wear sensor, which looks like this, you will literally just be able to pull off the brake caliper. And I already pulled it off, and uh, the pads are right here. I'll get to that in a second. I just want to give you guys a warning. The only thing holding the brake caliper on is this brake line right here. And this is a solid brake line. This is not rubber. This is a solid brake line, uh, which is great for performance and everything like that. There's no flexing of the hose, blah, 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 blah. However, understand that if you just go ahead and yank this thing, kind of what I did, I, would, I wouldn't realize, um, you know, you're going to bend that brake line. Nothing bad has happened. It's just if you do that, far enough or enough times you can make this brake line weak and or it could snap at the snout possibly right here or at the caliper and then you'll really be in a world of trouble trust me you don't want to deal with any leaky brake lines especially on this vehicle with this complex brake system so just be careful when you're taking this caliper off just rest it rest it right back here on the um brake rotor until you're ready to remove the brake rotor and replace it. All right, till we get to that, I wanna to talk to you about the brake pads that we got going on here. So out of the caliper is gonna come two shims. I think these are just OEM shims. Keep these. Uh, and then you've got um, the Brembo, the OEM Brembo pads. As you can see, the Alpha um, shield here with the Brembo logo and the OEM number. So hold on to your OEM pads always, even if you go aftermarket, hold on to these first set of pads, uh, kind of like a memento thing, but really uh, hold on to them because if you ever need to get OEM pads, 
You won't have to go, you know, years down the road or whatever, you won't have to go searching for part numbers, da, da, da. You can just pull them back out, search the part number, and order some OEM brake pads. Like I said, the wear sensor is built into the pad, all right? So it's actually just a basically a a wire that uh, once it you know detects uh, metal of the brake rotor, it completes the circuit and turns on the the, the wear sensor. So those are the old ones. Um, like I said, not a bad pad. If you don't do any sort of high performance driving, just go ahead and get another set of the stock OEM pads or uh, stock like pads. However, if you're going to do track days, if you're going to do autocross uh, somewhat competitively, if, you're got, if you know you're going to be doing a lot of high-performance driving, whether um, on the street or the track, I highly suggest stepping up to a better pad. And that's what we have here. These are the Porterfield. See if I can open this box one-handed. Yep. These are the Porterfield R4S pads. And this is the front set, obviously the rear set's over there. Uh, these pads are a much, much better um, performance-oriented pad. They come, uh, so let me tell you, I bought these from Alfisimo, Alfisimo, I'm not really sure how you pronounce the name, but uh, alfisimo.com, Jason of Alfisimo, he's awesome, great alpha enthusiast, he's had the Julia 2.0, and now he owns the Julia Quadrifoglio. Anyway, uh, super, uh, super cool guy, super knowledgeable. He sells these on his webpage uh, from Porterfield. They come with the wear sensors already installed. So all you have to do is bolt these up back to the car. Put these in the caliper and you're ready to go. Real quick, some information about these pads. Why did I choose these? These are the R4S. So if you go on Porterfield's website and look at their compound for the Julia. The R4S is their very aggressive street compound that's made for autocross primarily with a couple of track days a year. I expect these pads to last me about a year and a half, two years. Like I said, I don't have any track days planned. I do have a bunch of autocrosses that I do plan on doing and autocross is not hard on brake pads at all, uh, especially at the level that I'll be autocrossing. Nothing like national or whatever, just local autocross, uh, something to have fun with, you know, throw the car around. Um, some stats here, these pads can generate a 0.41 coefficient of friction. That is a very fast stopping pad. That's a lot of friction. Uh, just for comparison, on my last car, I had a big brake kit with some... Um, I forget the name of the brakes that I had that are escaping my mind right now, but I had some uh, legitimate race brake pads from Japan, and uh, they generated about a 0.5, uh, I believe, to 0.57 coefficient of friction, but that was once they were hot. You had to get them hot. So yeah, while they generated more coefficient of friction, you once again had a cold period of time where you didn't really have very good brakes, and then you know, they had the short window of where they were really good. These are awesome because 0.41 coefficient of friction is still really high. That's way higher than your regular stock brakes will ever get you. Um, but your window of life for these brakes when you're on the track or at autocross, you can start the car up and these brakes will generate 0.41 coefficient of friction cold. Yes, you can get in the car, you know, go 100 miles an hour after you warm the car up, etc. Step on these brakes and they will bring you to a stop incredibly quickly. You will not have to warm up these brakes, which is why uh, I would definitely recommend these for a street. You don't want to run a race brake, uh, I can't speak right now, a race brake pad on the street because until you get them hot, they don't really stop well. But these Porterfield R4S compound, they're going to stop cold or hot. And like I said, unless you're, you know, using these for like climbing up Pike's Peak or doing some crazy time attack, you're not going to wear these out. You're not going to get them too hot. Um, so I highly recommend you guys considering these. Once again, we're going to see how well they do. But uh, compared to everything else on the market for the jewelry right now, these were the best bet and the reviews uh, said no less. So let's go ahead, put in the new uh, brake pads 
And well, actually, before we do that, let's go ahead and take off the old rotor. All right. Okay, folks, so like I said, you don't wanna let this caliper just hang on its own. I put some blocks right here that are kind of supporting the caliper so that it's not just hanging by the brake line. Um, so to remove the rotor, really simple. There's a five millimeter Allen uh, hex key right here. You're gonna undo that. And then you're probably gonna to have to tap this with a mallet Use a mallet, a little bit of a softer force. Don't use a hammer. If, if a hammer's all you got, just be real soft with it. Probably gonna have to tap it around and then just go ahead and pull it off. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, y'all, there we go. I got some light, figured out how to use my phone. <laughs> so anyway, uh, yeah, you're gonna take that Allen key uh, retainer pin out, which looks like this. All right, put that in your little tool tray. And uh, I literally tapped the brake pad, the brake rotor with like three taps of a mallet and it fell right off. Um, it did help though that I let this car sit uh, with the wheel off and I sprayed some, some PB Blaster. Actually, I sprayed, it's, uh, it's not PB Blaster, but PB Blaster will work, but I sprayed something called uh, Seafoam Deep Creep. I sprayed, I sprayed it on here, oh, I cannot speak. I sprayed it on here and I let it sit for a good 30 minutes and uh, it allowed me to just pop it off. Um, so uh, long story short, I have some wheel spacers that are installed here, 17 millimeter wheel spacers. Um, before I fil started filming the video, I had to remove those and I decided to go ahead and take a wire brush and uh, brush down the hub here. Wow, it's slick, so my hand's slipping. Anyway, I, I, uh, I trimmed down the, the, the rust what I suggest you do is once you get the pad, the uh, rotor off, go ahead and take a wire brush. Um, I'll show you what that looks like. Put it on the end of a drill, okay? I went the long way around. Okay, get get your wire brush just like this. Like I said, you can get it from O'Reilly's. And uh, go ahead and uh, get rid of that residue on there. That'll make uh, a reinstallation of the new rotor that'll make that easier as well as future um, future installations and removals. You'll thank yourself in the future and it'll take absolutely no time as long as you got a good a good drill and a good brush like this Porter Cable drill here. Um, so yeah, go ahead and do that. I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, folks, so that literally took uh, 30 or 45 seconds from when I put the phone down to now. And I don't know if you can tell the difference on this outer ring right here but there's definitely a huge difference. It was this color previously, and now it's kind of that dull silver. Um, so do yourself a favor, and if you, uh, if you have a bunch of rust and stuff, just, just go ahead and get rid of it. Um, like I said, that'll just save you time um, in the future, and it'll make installing the new uh, rotor a lot um, easier. Remember, all of these things you would be paying a mechanic to do. So the longer they have to work on it, if you have a rusted car or a rusted hub here, the more you're going to pay. So while, yeah, it may take you longer up front uh, to do these things, you're saving hundreds of dollars. And that's why I really like the 2.0 Julia because the Quadrifoglio, at, while you can do the brake service at home, I don't think it's as simple and as straightforward as this. This is pretty much like the brake service on any other regular car. Okay, so now that the brake uh, rotor is off, we're gonna go ahead and um, move the pistons, the brake pistons and the caliper, we're gonna go ahead and push them back. That was the reason why I had us take off the cap here because you need the pressure relief. So if you've gotten to this point, and you haven't taken this cap off, take it off now. And let's go ahead and push those pistons back. All right, guys. So now it comes time to spread out or retract the caliper pistons. So let me walk you through that. Basically, there's a couple of ways. If you have the little universal tool that, you know, it looks like one straight piece with two flat pieces, you put it in here and you crank it. And then it'll at the same time spread both sets of pistons, the four piston caliper, two pistons here, two pistons there. It'll spread them at the same time. Uh, I have that tool, but mine doesn't fit. It's made for a bigger diameter brake kit. 
So what you can do is you can run to the auto parts store and you go get that, but it's too late for me to do that today. So what I did was I simply used one of the old brake pads. I threw it in here, right? I, I basically reinstalled it. This one goes on like that. I put it in there and then I used a C clamp, okay? So the brake pad was in there. I used a C clamp just like this with the brake pad installed and I, uh, and I put a little rag right here so I didn't damage the outside of the caliper, but I used a C-clamp and I basically just uh, tightened the C-clamp down and using the brake pad as the uh, lever, uh, not the lever, but as the, um, you know, interface here. So C-clamp is right here on my hand, the brake pad's here, and I just tightened it down just like that, I tightened it down and it pushed the pistons back in and did the same on the other side. So once again, use a brake pad, okay? If you don't have that universal tool, reinstall the brake pad, all right? Just put it right back in there where it goes, okay? And then take a C-clamp, just like this, and slide it on the outside, okay? Wiggle it in there, it's still a little bit tight right now, that's why I don't have it all the way over. Uh, but wiggle it in there, and then once it's all the way in there, start tightening the C-clamp, and the brake pad will spread the force across and push both pistons back in. You will have to, because there's two openings here, right? One, two. You will probably have to put the C-clamp in this opening to make sure that that brake pad goes all the way, that, that brake piston goes all the way in too, just like it was in here, okay? Um, but on this one, since you're not dealing with all the restrictions of the knuckle here, you can just slide it and put it in the center and it'll do both. So anyway, that is the, the uh, you know, makeshift way if you don't have one of those fancy tools. But now both, uh, all four pistons are retracted in here now. Uh, so now I can go ahead and reinstall my new brake rotor and reinstall my new pads and put this system all together. But before we do that, let me show you a comparison of the old rotor and the new R1 Concepts rotor. So look at that. Old compared to new. Check that out. All those hot spots and burn marks there, old corrosion and wear, old compared to new. So, I think she's gonna look great. All right, let's throw the new one on. All right, here's a big tip before we install it and really want y'all to pay attention, this is huge. And you'll end up doing double the work if you don't get this. These are not omnidirectional, okay? It's not like a blank rotor where you can just put it on any side of the car. These are directional rotors. You have to match them up with the side that they're made for. R1 Concepts does you a favor and labels them nicely with R for right, L for left, okay? And that's if you're sitting in the driver's seat. So this would be the passenger side rotor. All right, I'll put up the diagram, R1 Concepts uh, went even further and put up a diagram on their website, but I'll put it up right now. Basically, the direction uh, that the, uh, the um, I guess, the leading hole, right, closest to the, the hub, the leading hole, the lower one uh, needs to be facing the front of the car. The higher one needs to be facing the rear of the car, okay? Same can be said for the uh, driver's side, all right? So this is the direction of travel. Sorry, my hands are incredibly filthy. This is the direction of travel for this rotor, all right? So this is gonna be on the passenger side and it's gonna be on the car like this, okay? Okay, folks, so fast forward a little bit. I put my uh, Allen retainer screw in here um, and I made sure to put a little bit of semi-permanent Loctite on that. That holds your, your brake rotor to your hub. So put some, put some Loctite on there. 
Uh, put my brake pads back in with the shims, the uh, silver shims that came with it, uh, that, that come OEM, put those on the back there. I snaked the uh, wear sensor through here. It actually goes like this, through this little hole, sits right here. Put that back on the clip that it goes on and plugged it back in. Uh, this part was kind of tricky, getting these uh, slide pins back in here. Okay, so what you're gonna do is put this brake pad in first, slide this pin in to about right here. Do the same at the bottom with this slide pin and then put in the next brake pad. And you're gonna have to push them in because this is a spring retainer clip. So you're gonna have to push them in so that the slide pin can clear this little ear on the brake pad right here. But it, honestly, it's not that tricky. It's, it's It takes, you know, 45 seconds of wiggling around. Once that is good, you're now ready to mount the brake, pal the brake caliper back up using the uh, T55 bolts here. Torque that down once again, use some semi-permanent Loctite, and, uh, and then you can move on to the other side. Okay, folks, so we've got both front uh, brakes replaced rotors pads everything's installed tightened up good to go i put the front wheels back on and i lowered the car everything is the car's back level on the ground it's important that you do this step level on the ground now we're going to move on and do the rear brakes remember we're doing it like this because most people don't have a lift at their house or a way to lift up a car with just four jack points. Most people have just a jack or two. Like me, I only have two jacks and I'm not gonna go out and buy two more floor jacks. So this is the kind of the hard way, labor intensive, but it still saves you money. You don't have to go pay a mechanic hundreds of dollars or go rent out a lift. You can do this at your house just using two jacks. Um, and this way, um, you know, we're doing the front, then the rear. So we already did the front, now it's time for the rear. Follow this step. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and take my key. Right, I'm gonna unlock the car. I'm also gonna undo the trunk. Only reason I'm gonna undo the trunk is because um, for this step, I want to uh, hook up my battery tender to the battery. Um, because for this step, the car's gonna be on. All right, so anyway, uh, not on like the engine running, just the car's gonna be on. All right, so I'm gonna open the car and I still have the, uh, the brake fluid reservoir thing. I still have the cap off. I'm gonna open the car. I'm gonna sit inside here, turn on my light. Oops, turn on my light so that you guys can see. I need to go to one dimmer. All right, I'm just gonna set my key in here. It's gonna stay in there. Um, and just turn the car on. We're not actually gonna turn the motor on. We're just turning the car on. Go ahead. All right, sorry. All that noise. Jeez, okay. Go ahead and turn off the proximity thing so that's not flipping out. Roll down the window uh, so that you're able to close the door and get back in here. Oh my God. Shut up, sorry, I gotta disconnect the uh, radar detector. Okay, so now we're in the car. What we're gonna do, let's go ahead and close the door. Uh, we're going to go over here to settings. All right, go to driver assist. Okay, gonna go, oops, driver assist. We're gonna go over to brake service. All right, actually first we're gonna go to auto park brake. So we need to turn it off, right? So, we, so we're gonna turn the auto park brake off on the system. All right, then we're also going to turn it off here. So you need to put your foot on the brake and you turn it off, okay? And you should have heard the uh, parking brake retract okay all right 
At this point in time, the car should still be in park, so it's not going to go anywhere. All right. But the parking brake, make sure it stays off. Take your foot off the brake. All right. And if you need to slow down and pause this part a bunch of times, that's okay. Once the parking brake is disengaged and once it says here that auto park brake is off, you're going to go to brake service, hit brake service. Would you like to retract park brakes to allow for brake system service? Yes. It's going to say initializing. You're going to throw a code here saying that it's servicing electronic brake. Parking brake retracted. To reset, press brake pedal and activate park brake switch. Okay, so now, so now we can go and replace our rear uh, brakes. All right, so just leave the car as is. I wouldn't touch anything. You might be able to turn the car off, but I wouldn't touch anything. And I'm not going to touch anything because I don't want there to be an issue. So I'm going to hook up the battery tender so the car doesn't. Uh, die the battery doesn't die and um, and yeah I'm just gonna go and uh, service the rear brake the other thing I want you to know is uh, let me go ahead and I'm gonna turn the light off though uh, I'm gonna turn the lights off you know that way the car doesn't die um, leave the key in the car like I said leave the window open because if you have the window up and the car died, your keys in the car, whatever. One other big tip. So before we go to the back and jack the rear of the car up, make sure you have the front tires chalked. Put wheel chocks right here. Once again, redundancy for safety, right? If for whatever reason the transmission were to shift out of park or to fail, these chocks will save your life, save lots of damage on the car, okay? So now we're gonna go jack up the rear of the car, on both sides, just like we did the front, take the wheels off, service the brakes, uh, bleed them in the rear because you start in the rear to bleed, put the wheels back on, move our way back to the front. All right. All right, folks, so when you have everything jacked up and you've put the car, uh, you've taken the uh, electronic parking brake off, you put it in the brake service mode, what you're going to do is, you know, obviously take the wheel off and then you're going to remove this piece, which goes like this. This was hooked in here. You just pop it out. All right. Pop it out spring. It keeps the tension on here. All I used was, uh, I had this laying around, but a flathead screw screwdriver will do the exact same thing. So you just hook it in there and pop it right out. Okay. Once you've popped that out, Next, there's going to be a, a cap right here. So pop that, this out right here, this cap um, keeps the lubrication for the slide pin in. So there's a cap right here, just popped it out. And you're going to go ahead and use a seven millimeter uh, Allen key, hex key, and that's going to fit right in here. You're going to hear it click slide in there. And then you're gonna go ahead and take your wrench and loosen it up. And you'll do it, there's two of these. There's one up here and there's one right down there. All right, so go ahead and then you're gonna take the entire bolt out. Okay, folks, so once you get the bolt out of here, which looks like this, okay? Once you get both of those bolts out, you're gonna go ahead and disconnect the uh, wear sensor Exact same thing that we saw up on the front, real simple. And then you're gonna go ahead and disconnect. I'm sorry, you're gonna go ahead and pull this grommet out of its socket. All that's doing is allowing you freedom of movement so that when we take this off, um, we can manipulate it and hang it right here somewhere else while we uh, you know, adjust, uh, sorry, uh, while we loosen and remove and reinstall the rotor. So uh, once you get this out of the way and you can just hook it up to the springs with a zip tie, um, it's still hooked up to the brake line, it's still hooked up to the uh, uh, parking brake uh, cord. 
You're going to come back here and you're going to use a T, I'm sorry, an E18 socket to remove the bracket. And that's going to allow you to knock this sucker off. Okay, once you've taken those two E18 bolts off, the bracket's going to come off. You can set it down. And the rotor is held on by one of these uh, five millimeter Allen keys. All you gotta do is take that out and then you can tap this thing off. Came off by hand, first try. All right, let's go ahead, install the new rotor, new pads, reassemble. All right, so now it's time to spread the pads out. So in this case, my old caliper spreader that didn't work in the front does work up here in the rear um, because you know it's got the rear doesn't have it's not enclosed it's not enclosed like the Brembo brake in the front so uh, all I'm doing is I'm um, wrenching and it's literally spreading or pushing the uh, piston back into uh, the caliper remember that our brake reservoir is still open it's been open this whole time so there should be no resistance when opening uh, the caliper at all. Remember, do yourself a favor and go and polish this off with a wire brush so that when you reinstall the new rotor um, and spacers, if you have them, uh, you won't run into any issues. All right, let's finish this and then uh, throw on the new brake pads and reinstall. Hey y'all, sorry, but I had to fast forward. I had some filming issues. Anyway, if you get to the point where I left off, you essentially got to the end, make sure you reassemble in reverse order. And if you have any questions or get confused, refer to the links below that'll guide you through the process step by step. And always, once you're done with the uh, doing the brakes, make sure that you bleed the system to ensure that your brakes function properly. This car bleeds uh, the brakes just like any other car so there's a couple of methods to do that but I'm not going to get into it if you're interested just search online talking about the R1 concepts brake rotors and the pads from Porterfield I'll say the performance is awesome for the money I don't think there's anything better offered for the 2.0 Julia at the moment they look great they're coated uh, to not rust you will have to break in the brake pads. There is a break in procedure. Go on Porterfield's website or you can just go online and look up how to break in brake pads. And it's pretty much the same across any platform. This car stops so well. Just dailying on the street, the car doesn't stop any better or worse than the OEM setup. However, from high speeds, don't ask me how I know, this car stops with so much more confidence and security. I love it, love it, love it. Not only that, but it really sets off the Julia and gives it the cherry on top of that exotic European look. Me personally, I like cross-drilled only rotors. It seems to match, um, but everybody has their preference. I 100% recommend R1 Concepts and Porterfield to anybody, and I love this combination. As always, thanks for watching, y'all. Like and subscribe. If you have any more questions, hit me up on Facebook or Instagram. See you then.